This is your Wall Street Wake Up Call. Fed Chair Janet Yellen is speaking in Jackson Hole, Wyoming this morning. And we have J.P. Morgan Chase Chief Economist Anthony Chan here on set to tell us everything we need to know heading into the speech. So, Anthony, does Janet Yellen remain vague on the timing of the next rate hike in terms of September versus December, but still leave the door open for one more hike this year using terms like near term or the data would warrant an appropriate increase in the Fed funds rate? I think she has to continue to remain, you want to say vague, I would say flexible, because the Federal Reserve does want to raise rates this year. But of course, being data dependent, they have to keep that flexibility open. One of the most important things for the Federal Reserve right now is to make sure that the financial markets are prepared uh, for a rate hike. They want to raise the probability of the Fed futures markets, which is now, by December, approaching about 57 percent. They want to raise it high enough that it doesn't catch the market flat-footed if they raise rates. And what will Yellen say on inflation? Because the fact is, inflation is not near the Fed's 2 percent target. Will that alone keep the Fed on the sidelines, regardless of what the labor market is doing and what the markets are doing? The inflation rate is a very sensitive topic because you're absolutely right. We're not at the levels that the Federal Reserve would say is that's our target. But at the same time, the, the inflation rate is gradually moving higher. And there are other voices in the Federal Reserve that are saying, maybe we should even raise that inflation target a little bit higher. So that is a real sensitive topic. Now, a lot has happened since Janet Yellen's Jackson Hole speech last, since over the past year, since the last one, right? We had, obviously, the first rate hike. We had volatile markets. We had, you know, a Brexit vote. But yet, a lot of the themes that we were talking about last year are still in play today. Would you agree? I would agree. Uh, but one thing I will say is that the United States, the U.S. economy has actually survived all those great fears at the beginning of the year that we were going into a recession. Now the real debate is not whether we're going into a recession, but whether we're growing fast enough to actually justify a rate move. And I would say we are, in fact, making progress in that direction, and a rate move sometime before the end of the year is well justified. Now, are we coming to the conclusion that monetary policy, especially as long as we've relied on it here in the U.S., eight years of unprecedented central bank influence, is just not as effective as we once thought it was? I think the, the economics profession has certainly proven that over the last couple hundred years, that when you push interest rates to almost zero, it is a lot less effective than when interest rates are very high and you're lowering them. Yes, we've done quantitative easing. Yes, we've done other things. And that's one of the topics uh, for Janet Yellen, the monetary toolkit. It is less effective at very low interest rates than it is at higher rates. And that's one of the reasons why central bankers all over the world are trying to nudge fiscal policymakers to do more. But also, don't you think that the Fed is leading global central banks down the wrong path? I mean, you know, we see the Bank of Japan, the Bank of England, the European Central Bank sort of following the playbook that the Fed implemented, you know, in the immediate aftermath of the recession. That is true, but I would not categorize the Federal Reserve as being unsuccessful. From the bottom of the global financial crisis, we've created more than 14 million jobs. That is not an unsuccessful outcome. So the Federal Reserve has been successful. The question is whether the, the power of monetary policy is as effective today as it was when interest rates were higher. Of course it's not. And that's one of the reasons why the Federal Reserve is trying to avoid continuing to push on a strength. All right. And just quickly, the market's reaction to all of this, how do you think investors will be watching the speech today? I think investors will be watching to see whether Janet Yellen tips her hat uh, in the direction of a rate hike in September or December. I think she has to remain flexible and say that a rate hike sometime before the end of the year is justified and that the data will tell us whether or not it's September or December. My best guess is that the Federal Reserve would like to do it in December. All right, but before we let you go, of course, uh, Fed officials met with this Fed Up group, which is an advocacy group last night, and they push for diversity in the, in the Federal Reserve. And of course, they, they're proposing a hold uh, on interest rates, right? They don't want increases. Yes, that group doesn't want interest rates to rise because the group is arguing that when you raise interest rates, it hurts minorities that are just starting to make progress. I was very excited about the fact that they also push the Federal Reserve to do more diversity. As a former Federal Reserve economist, as an economist of Hispanic and Asian descent, I certainly welcome uh, the Federal Reserve to, to add more diversity. And Bill Dudley did, in fact, uh, suggest that the Fed would consider it. All right. Anthony Chan, the chief economist at J.P. Morgan Chase. Always a pleasure to see you. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. By. I'm Scott Gam, and you're watching The Street.